starting here for Municipal World. I'm at the 2018 JLT Public Sector Summit, and joining me in our studio is Ken Coates, the MC for the event and the uh, thought leader on leadership for the event. Welcome. Great to be with you again. Thank you. So the theme for the event um, this week has been leading into the unknown. Uh, the speakers this week have really kind of captured uh, a lot of those uh, key things around challenges, changes, opportunities. And in the midst of all of that, there is um, a sense that we need some particular types of leadership to take us through this uh, next era. Yeah, we do actually. I mean, these are really troubling times. They're exciting. There's times when you're watching things change with new technologies and new social realities, global competition. It gets really exciting and things are on the table and we're competing all the time. But boy, does it ever require a different kind of leader. Um, there's way more scrutiny uh, through social media uh, from the public at large. Um, people are quite intolerant of things that they don't agree with. And so you get very vicious and critical sort of commentary on, on, on different kinds of Twitter feeds and things of, things of that sort. There's an immediacy. Everybody knows about something bad that's happened. They know about it 30 seconds after it's happened. And you have this sort of crisis management kind of scenario. You have these incredible changes in technology which can bring about some wonderful shifts in services. For government services, for example, we can do better than we did before. However, when you do that, you're often displacing jobs. So you're using digital systems to replace human systems. So it's cheaper, it's faster, it's even better, but now your community has fewer employees. It's bad enough when that happens at the municipality, municipal level. What happens with, with an industry? When you had 1,000 workers, now you have 150 because you have robotics taking over. So we don't know where this technology goes. We're very bad at anticipating what impact will, it will have. When social media came into existence, people thought it was a great way for teenage girls to talk to each other, and they could actually communicate and share stories and things like that. All of a sudden, you realize it's manipulating political processes. Uh, you've got people who are trolling after politicians and attacking them endlessly, uh, going after municipal officials and criticizing their kind of work. Um, and then we have the, the much larger level sort of issues. Um, everybody has to be an expert in climate change. Everybody has to start figuring out what's going, to, what's going to occur with the growth of China as a major economic power, with India coming in very shortly behind. Um, we have to worry about the, the whole impact of immigration, which is on a global scale, reshaping societies. So there's a bunch of us of my generation who look back and think, I remember when municipal government was fairly easy. It was about potholes and water services and garbage disposal. and It was about doing the, making sure the swimming pool was operating and the library was open. It was a pretty straightforward job. Not Much anymore. more complex Not anymore. today, Way more isn't complex. it? Yeah. So uh, what kind of uh, leadership qualities are we looking for uh, people to bring to uh, help us through this next period? So the leader of tomorrow has to be superb in everything. And nobody's really superb in everything. Um, I think one of the couple of things they really need, they need competence. We really need people who deliver. Uh, they have to decide on what the project is, what the priority happens to be, and they have to implement it and bring it to a quick resolution. We need that competence. We need calmness. When you're going to have forces coming at you from all different angles, you can't have people who panic easily. They have to be folks who can sort of look at the 14 things on the table and decide which two are going to get dealt with this week and which ones will be push down the road a little bit as they go forward. Um, they have to be future thinkers. So you cannot plan for six months from now or even a year from now. People have to be planning for 10 and 20 years sort of down the line. Because if you don't, you're going to start making bad investments and poor investments sort of, sort of right now. So really strategic thinking about uh, yeah. what's happening out there. Very strategic thinking without, with, and recognizing the fact that nobody knows what's going to happen. So strategic thinking used to be we know what the likely outcomes of A, B, and C are, so let's plan for A, B, and C. Nowadays, you plan for A, B, and C, but you have D, E, F, and G coming in completely from outer space and changing the dynamics really quickly. So there's a certain amount of sort of adjusting on the fly and sort of being innovative and, and, and sort of flexible. Um, but I think perhaps the most important thing of the leadership is they have to be engaged with all their constituents. We, and this is talking about municipal officers as well as politicians. They have to be a presence in their community. People have to trust them. They have to have confidence in their competence. They have to sort of just have this sense that things are in good hands. And when you have that, and it's actually much easier to get in a small town where 
you'll see you at the grocery store, they'll, you know, kids go to this, play the same soccer team. When you have that kind of local contact, it's actually much easier to have those kind of relationships, harder in a big city, um, but not impossible, not impossible. Um, and the interesting thing that I worry about is that because the changes are so complex and multifaceted and all this kind of stuff, um, then we have to um, realize that everybody's gonna want the same small pool of leaders. And you're gonna have intense competition for uh, somebody who's really good, yeah. they're gonna be under pressure to leave in the private sector, the public sector, federal, provincial relations, all this kind of stuff. There's a finite number of people who really get this stuff and they're gonna be in high demand. Do you think that's what we're seeing uh, with our uh, senior level administrators in municipalities already? Uh, because we see a lot of transition, uh, folks moving around and, uh, you know, kind of uh, this war on talent. I think we're already seeing it uh, in the top levels of uh, local government. We're seeing a tremendous amount of turnover. One of the interesting things about it, I think it's really fascinating, is the fact that people in Ontario know who's good in Alberta. People in British Columbia hear about who's really good in Nova Scotia. Why? National conferences, uh, the intense interest in best practice. So if a community does a really good job on relationships with Indigenous peoples, there are some communities that have done extremely, extremely well. And in, in a city manager or somebody in that file with, uh, in municipal government gets a reputation for doing this. So a community discovers that somebody in Alberta has done a really good job with this and you're in Ontario, you've got a First Nation community close at hand, you know exactly who to go for. And you probably have met them at a conference, met them at a meeting, worked with them on a national or provincial committee. So people actually know each other much better than before. And it's much easier to figure out exactly who you need um, and all, uh, the other side is that com organizations, municipalities in this case, um, know that buying expertise is a much faster solution than growing it themselves. Growing it themselves is a better way to go. So if you're looking at that indigenous relationship, if you've got eight people in your, in your municipal office who are tasked with working on new relationships with indigenous folks, you've got a pool you can draw on and they can sort of move through the ranks together and they bring that skill as a group Right. Um, if you're always looking for the person to come in and parachute in, what you're doing is you're trading specific talent in one particular area for the huge benefits of local knowledge and local contacts. And so what I think is oftentimes it's good for everybody to have turnover, good for everybody to bring in folks from other, other jurisdictions and what have you. Growing from within is still the, by far and away the best way to go. And there is evidence now that shows that uh, those leaders who have experience with your community, with your organization, uh, bring a lot of uh, in, intuition and insights that uh, yeah. are difficult to replicate. And, and we put way too little emphasis on that. You know, local knowledge means something. Um, having credibility with local people really helps an awful lot. I've been in many situations at municipal level and provincial level where, you know, you've got a, a crisis brewing and somebody comes in from the side from a municipal office and as soon as the folks see that individual and think, okay, Mary's here, things are going to be okay. And if the person coming in is, who's that? Well, that's the new person we hired, you know, a, a, a gunslinger we hired from Ottawa, right? They may be fabulous. It, and they may be fabulous over time, but there's no question whatsoever that knowing the people in the community, having that local knowledge, uh, having the, the, the corporate memory of what happened before and why, but people will often react negatively to a new idea because something like it was tried 15 years before, it, it, it you need a balance of those things. I think right now we're, we're too much oriented on a single issue. We're going to have technology change. Let's bring a change manager on technology. In indigenous issues, economic development, let's go find a city manager who did a wonderful job of bringing new factories into their town. Might not be so good on recreation. Might not be so good on sort of libraries and culture and things of that sort. So have a balance. Don't always think you can hire that special expertise from away. And one of the other things that uh, I thought was interesting uh, that you talked about yesterday was uh, this concept of leadership skills, the toolkits, and uh, it, it, they're tools that can be used uh, for good or for evil, and so we need to have some critical thinking around this. I, I think we do. I mean, I'm, I'm very much of the mind, if you actually look at history, you will discover that some of our most successful leaders with the greatest leadership skills by far were megalomaniacs. Um, they, were, they were evil people. 
they did they used all the skills of organization and logic and motivation and, and mobilization of people and all those sorts of things to do some of the most horrible things in human history. So we sort of look at leadership and say, ah, oh, that's our goal. You have leadership. Yeah, not so much. Right? You have a set of skills. The question I think is more important is what are the values? What are the sort of the core competencies, the skills are really, really important. But do people, are they caring? Are they compassionate? Um, are they really interested in social justice? Do they, do they really understand what happened? What's it like to be in a town when the main factory closes down and 800 people lose their jobs in a town of 3,000 people? Do they appreciate what that's going to be like going forward? And you know, other people will look at that if you're, if you're just a leader for leader's sake. And you can look and say, okay, well, here's what I can do to get myself a job in a new town. Or here's what I can do that you know, there's an opening for some of my friends who have a different business. They can slide in and make a whole bunch of money. Leadership is, is, a, it, it is a toolkit. And the question is, what are you using it for? And when you think back to the great leaders, that you, people you really admire, typically it comes back to their character, comes back to their value system, and it comes back to their sense of, of sort of collective vision. That it isn't what they want to do, it's what they think is best for the institution, or in this case for the community. And, and we all know folks like that, and they're brilliant. And sometimes even they're, 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 they're short a screwdriver or two in their toolkit. They aren't, they aren't perfect at those things, but people cut them slack because they care so much and they've done such good work for the community over a long period of time. Okay, so one last question. Uh, when we're mired in the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, work of leadership, it's hard to know whether we're, uh, you know, whether we're hitting the mark, you know, whether we're doing a good job. How do you know? So I think the interesting thing about leadership and what, the whole question of, you know, am I a good leader or a bad leader? Actually, you'll discover the answer when you leave. Um, you don't, in, the t in the time, there's too many pressures, too many demands, too many expectations. You're balancing off competing interests. You're making one person happy here because you agree with them and somebody angry over here because they disagree. What happens is when you leave, almost instantly you think, now we know what we're missing. That, that, that calmness or that personality or that character or that passion, all of a sudden it's just gone. And you think, well, that's, that's amazing. But then five or ten years out, you look back and a good leader is one who left a, a legacy and a path. And you can say, you know, remember how fight we had with that, 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 that city manager over the park? And he just persisted and persisted and got us on board. And, and look what we did. We built the park. And you go down there on a Sunday afternoon and there's 3,000 people hanging around and tourists are coming because of the park is there. And it's just a huge asset in the community to say, ah, Bill did that. You know, and we fought him tooth and nail, but my heavens, did he do a great job. And sometimes we want that instant gratification. We're going to do a 360 and we're going to find out whether the person is a good leader. Not, not even getting helpful information. What you'll find out is who did that person make happy yesterday and who did they make angry two days ago? And it's useful information and you can talk to them about their managing styles or whatever. But that doesn't really tell you the impact that they're having. And we're not very good at actually going back and saying 15, 15 years after a senior official has left their office at say a city manager or something like that or a planner and going back and saying, what did they do? Um, when I go to different communities that I live in, I've lived in over time, you, the, the main things you know about the town are things that happened 15, 20, 30 years ago where somebody led the community to do something wise and great or incredibly stupid. And that's when you actually know. So some people you think were great leaders, 15 years down the line you think we're still picking up their mess. It's left a lasting impact uh, for good or otherwise, Absolutely. and that's how you know. Absolutely, and I think you know for, for leaders themselves, um, don't expect the accolades and the huge celebrations. You might get a gold watch at the time you retire, but just sit there and watch your community as time goes on, and you look back and you think, yeah, those battles, I remember how terrible they were. We all have those things where you think, oh, I'm just gonna give up, I'm not gonna do this anymore, and you look back and think, oh, I did that. I was a huge part of that. I played a role in that. And that's where you get your real satisfaction from later in life. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your insights. Really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure to be here at the uh, event and uh, listening to all the, the always, great insights. Always delighted to be with you. Take okay. care. Thank you. I'm Susan Gardner from Municipal World. We share your stories.